First, I just want to say thanks to all of you that subscribe to my channel. This video shows how to replace the Sonad pack in a Chrysler 62 TE automatic transmission. I decided to remake this video because the original version was recorded using a poor quality cell phone camera. This version is more complete and contains the all change procedures. What you're looking at is the Sonad pack from a Chrysler 62 TE automatic transmission. This unit contains seven solenoids. If any of the solenoid goes bad, you must replace the whole unit because they don't sell the solenoids individually. To change the solenoid pack, you must remove the valve body from the transmission. This is because the bolts to remove the solenoid pack are mounted on the back side of the valve body. If a solenoid malfunction, the transmission control module will store an error code and put the transmission into limp mode. In limp mode, the transmission will not go past third gear, thus reducing the speed to about 40 miles per hour. The vehicle I will be working on is a 2010 Volkswagen Rauten SEL. It has a 4.0 liter V6. If you have the 3.8 liter V6 with the 6.2 TE automatic transmission, you have to remove the exhaust pipe that runs over the transmission and anything else not covered here. The error code stored was P0755. This code means that the 2.4 shift solenoid has malfunction. You will see this as shift solenoid B on your OBD2 scanner. As you can see, this solenoid is normally open so it must not be closing properly or not at all when instructed by the TCM to do so. To fix this problem, you need a new solenoid pack, new o-rings for the oil transfer tubes, new 2-4 clutch oil seal, that is that black thing to the left of the gasket maker. You will also need new transmission filter, gasket maker, and automatic transmission fluid. To set the proper oil level, you will also need a special calibration dipstick. This can be found on Amazon. You also need something to check the transmission fluid temperature. I use a digital food temperature gauge that has a probe that will reach down to the oil. You are going to work from both the top and bottom of the vehicle. What you are looking at is the sonar pack as it mounts to the valve body. You will have to use a wire hanger or similar to keep those wires out of your way. Something I forgot to mention in the old video. So let's get started. Raise the vehicle and drain the oil from the transmission. This oil pan has no drain plug, so you will have to remove most of the bolts from the oil pan and then use a paint scraper or a similar device to pry between the gasket and the oil pan. Loosen the bolt and remove the ground cable from the side of the transmission. Remove the plastic clips and move the cable towards the top of the transmission. Remove the battery and battery tray. Unclip the large wires from the transmission. Use a wire hanger or similar to hold the wires out of your way. Remove the shift cable from the manual lever. Mark how you found it and loosen the bolt. Remove the coolant expansion bottle. To do this, remove the small hose from the radiator and then pull up on the coolant expansion bottle to unlock it from the radiator. Disconnect the main harness from the sonide pack. To do this, release the clip and swing the latch around to remove the harness. Remove the sound damper if equipped from the valve body cover. There are three fasteners that must be removed before this cover will come off. One at the top and two at the bottom. Remove the cover by carefully directing it around the dipstick nozzle, upwards towards the radiator and then send it out the bottom of the vehicle. At this point, use compressed air to clean the top of the transmission and the valve body cover to prevent dust from falling into the transmission when you remove the valve body cover. Also keep the work area clean and cover the open area with clean plastic bags if you plan to finish the job sometime later. Remove all the valve body pan bolts and remove the valve body cover. Carefully direct it towards the bottom of the vehicle and out. Disconnect the wire harness from the range switch. Remove the torque bolt, then remove the detent arm. 
This arm is used to stabilize the range switch and allow it to lock into each position. Removing it will allow you to gain access to two hidden bolts and to free the valve body from the transmission. Now remove 21 bolts that hold the valve body to the transmission. Take note as to where these bolts go. The valve body contains random holes that nothing goes into. There are two bolts hidden behind the range switch. To access them, move the range switch left and right. What I mean is, swing the range switch left, then remove bolt number 12, then swing the range switch right, then remove bolt number 11. Now it's time to remove the valve body from the transmission. To the lower right of the valve body, there are three oil lines that is pressed into the valve body and sealed with O-rings. Depending on how tight these O-rings are, you may need to apply more force in this area to get the valve body moving. Turn the manual lever fully forward to allow the pin to slide out of the range switch. Pull the valve body away from the transmission housing. Pry it away from the oil transfer tubes while at the same time slightly lift up to allow the pin to slide out of the range switch. Now carefully take the valve body out of the bottom of the vehicle. If you pull the valve body outwards and then up and it still won't come out, the oil transfer tubes may be pulled out of the compound gear instead of the valve body. If this happens, remove the oil filter to gain access to the oil transfer tubes and then grab it with the pliers and then try again, making sure that the oil transfer tubes are completely out of the valve body before you attempt to take the valve body out. Now that the valve body is out of the vehicle, disconnect all wire harness from the valve body. Turn over the valve body so that the solenoid pack is at the bottom. It is best to find something to make it sit flush with the table as the harness connector of the solenoid pack will be hitting the table first. Remove the 14 torque bolt shown. Remove the mounting bracket from the valve body. Before you flip the valve body over, a word of warning is in order. The bolts that you just removed also hold the top and bottom plate of the valve body together. When you flip the valve body over, these two protruding dural pins will hit the table first and allow the back plate to move away from the valve body. When this happens, Three or four check balls will fall out of the valve body, and you must know which hole they came from. To prevent this, place a solid square or rectangle object on the back area before you flip the valve body over. The objective is to make the object touch the table first, thus keeping the back cover on. With your solid object on the back cover, carefully flip the valve body over, like so. This demonstration was done afterwards, hence the solenoid pack already removed. Go ahead and remove the solenoid pack. The filter screen may be stuck to the valve body. Pry it off. In the last video, I have a viewer ask me a question about new solenoid packs. He wanted to know if the new solenoid packs have oil coming from it. The answer is yes, clean automatic transmission fluid. Just make sure you buy them from a reputable source and find out if it's new or rebuilt. Now back to the video. Install a new solenoid pack and filter screen to the valve body. While holding the solenoid pack firmly against the valve body, Carefully flip the valve body over so that the solenoid pack sits at the bottom. If you somehow miss the warning given earlier and the cover plate fall off, place the balls in the hole shown. Note that some valve body has four balls instead of three. If yours have four, I cannot help you with their location. See Chrysler Repair Manual. With the check balls in place and the back cover on, insert the bolts through the bracket into the solenoid pack. Tighten the bolts in a crisscross fashion to 50 inch pound or 6 newton meters. Remove the wire harness from their stored location and connect them to the valve body. Put the valve body aside and go back to the vehicle. Use a long nose pliers to remove the 2-4 clutch oil seal and install a new one. Make sure the o-ring is closest to you with the notch facing outwards. Pull out the oil transfer tubes and install new o-rings. Take note of the orientation. Look at the rubber piece on the tubes for reference. Push the tubes back into the transmission. This will take some force because the o-rings are new. Dip them in some automatic transmission fluid to help with the installation.
Ensure that the manual lever is fully forward and place to select the pin into the slot of the ring switch. Align the oil tubes with the three holes in the lower right of the valve body and press the valve body onto the tubes and into the transmission. Install 21 bolts in the holes shown. Tighten the bolts in a diagonal fashion, not according to the number shown. Tighten the bolts to 50 inch pounds or 6 newton meters. Install the detent arm to the valve body. This also torque to 50 inch pounds or 6 newton meters. Connect the only remaining wire harness from the sonar pack to the range switch. Install the valve body cover. Use a bead of Mopar ATF RTV MS GF41 or similar. Tighten the bolts in a diagonal fashion to 50 inch pounds or 6 newton meters. Install the sound damper. Apply some blue thread lock to the shift linkage bolt at the manual lever and tighten the bolt. Chrysler did not give a torque specification so use your discretion. Reconnect the main harness to the sonar pack. Reinstall the ground cable. Install the coolant expansion tank to the radiator. Connect the hose to the radiator. Install the battery and battery tray. Leave the negative terminal off for now. Remove the transmission oil filter. It is held in by two bolts. Remove the bolts and pull the filter out. Remove the filter seal. Even though simple and straightforward, you practically have to crush this seal to get it out. Install a new filter and seal. Tighten the bolts to 40 inch pound or 5 newton meters. In other words, not too tight. In the oil pan, there is a magnet that collects metal particles. Remove it and clean it. In fact, clean both the magnet and the oil pan. Using the same gasket maker, install the oil pan. Tighten all bolts in a crisscross fashion to 50 inch pounds or 6 newton meters. After some time later, pour 4.5 quarts of Chrysler ATF plus 4R equivalent fluid into the transmission. To set the proper transmission fluid level, make sure the vehicle is parked on the level surface. Connect the negative terminal back to the battery. Start the engine and let idle for about 2 minutes. Apply the parking brakes and the service brakes and then move the selector lever from park to each position, momentarily stopping in each. Then back to park or neutral. Do this a couple of times. Now check the temperature of the transmission fluid, then the level. Use this chart to set the correct level. For example, if the fluid temperature is 125 degrees Fahrenheit, the level on the dipstick should be 16 millimeters minimum and 34 millimeters maximum. I try to make the level closer to the maximum. Add fluid as necessary. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos.